All right, I have Sheila. Sheila Westmoreland with Transmer Trans America Agency. Thank you for joining me today. And you've been telling me about some awesome products that you have. And I thought I would record you so that you can share that with the world because I think everybody needs the products that you have. So go ahead and introduce yourself, Sheila, and we take it from there. Okay, well, thanks, Vanda, for the invitation. As you said, my name is Sheila Westmoreland. I am a, an agent with Transamerica Agency Network. I'm an independent agent um, affiliated with that company. I have my, um, some information, contact information is gonna be provided on um, the, the link to the video. So one of the things that I really wanted to um, share is as we have this conversation is about our financial freedom product that's called In Index Universal Life. One of the things that I really like about that product is that it helps us when we're dealing with clients who are thinking about ways to maybe say establish generational wealth or they're looking for ways to um, protect, put, put some protection around their assets. Uh, one of the wonderful things about this specific policy is that um, you cannot lose money within the policy so that what, what you put into the policy goes into a global index account. And there's, we're, there are different options. It can go into a global index account or S&P 500 index account, but you cannot lose money um, in this account because there's a floor that prevents you from um, going be below what you actually bring into the account. So that's one of the things that I think is pretty phenomenal about it. And um, it, it gives you some protections, like you, you get living benefits. So if you have a chronic illness or critical illness, you would be able to use proceeds from this particular account to uh, take care of some of your living expenses if those things came about unexpectedly and you found that you didn't have resources outside of this type of a policy to help to cover it, to give you coverage. So it, it's very customizable. Um, some, of, some of the information that I'm going through, Vanda's pulling up on the screen. Very much customizable. It has uh, offers the protection of a children's benefit rider for people who, who have young children or if you have grandchildren. One of the things that I think is, is utmost importance about this particular policy is that for a $250,000 minimum face value on the policy, the, um, the person who the policy is on can set up a trust for their family. And that's something that you, you get a concierge service in order to be able to have the trust. So I'm not a trust attorney, but it is something that I find very beneficial that when I'm speaking to clients about what their needs look like, in order to be able to say to them, I can assure you that everything will go as you specify in the future, because we would set it up in a trust and we would have you working with attorneys who will set that up for you. And it's a, it's a, complimentary service as you uh, benefit of you taking out this 250000 minimum FFIUL policy from Transamerica. Sheila, I have a question. Go ahead. Trust. That's for like trust fund babies and people that have a lot of money. The average Joe doesn't know anything about a trust. What is a trust? So what it is, I'm going to just give you a very um, broad answer, Vanda, because as I said, I'm not a trust attorney. But we're gonna. I'm gonna just give you give you something that's gonna tell us a very basic understanding of what a trust is, and, and how um, a trust can be beneficial for your family. So, um, by law, a trust is an arrangement whereby a person or a trustee holds property in its nominal uh, as its nominal owner for the good of one or more beneficiaries. So, what that means is that. A trust, let's say a trust is a garage, okay? You, you understand what I'm saying? So we'll, we'll use that as an analogy. A trust is a garage. So that's a structure. And that structure would give you, would, would you then be able to put assets inside of that structure? And that keeps those, those assets protected for your loved ones when the time comes for them to be able to need those, those um, assets down the road. So as, 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 a, as a beneficiary, you might find that a trust would have 
maybe a million dollars, maybe $5 million. You might find that a trust has real property in it, like real estate. You may find that it has a 529 college education plan for um, minor children. So there are, there are different assets that can be put inside of the garage that's called the trust. And so all of my family or whoever is included in the trust can go to this garage and get out what they need when they need it or how do they, they access this? They would be able garage. to request. Yes, they, they can get their, their You're going to stipulate how they can get it. So the, that's the wonderful things is that you talk to a, you talk to an attorney who sets it up for you. And then there's a trustee that's appointed. And so the trustee, your your loved one will go say, well, I need X dollars for this or I need to access that. And they would say, well, let me check the terms of the trust. And if it's within the terms of the trust, then that's something that they can they can be granted access to. OK, so now you lost me at going to get an attorney because we know getting attorneys are expensive. I don't so, want to spend all that money. Give me an attorney to put all so, the right. in the garage and, you know, so, set for that me, up. so what about it's, gonna, it's already going to be set up the concierge. When I say that there's a concierge service that we afford um, to clients who take out this specific policy. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to pay for the attorney. It's paid for on our end. Oh, okay. Right. It's paid for on our end to make all the, to make the arrangements for your loved ones. And then that you, you appoint, you'll determine who is going to be the trustee, who is basically the overseer of everything that you've laid, the plan that you've laid out in place with the attorney that we will pay for. So I have to get your policy though, to get that service. That's correct. It has to, it has to be a Transamerica um, FFIUL policy with a minimum face value of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and um, there's the the rates on those policies vary depending upon the the um, age of the person who is the insured or the covered person. And uh, we also offer, as I said, we offer riders on that policy. You could add a rider for a child or a grandchild, a dependent child or a grandchild if you wanted to do that, which means that you could take out that, someone could take out a policy, the FFIUL $250,000 policy. So for example, if I put one on myself, then I could take out a policy on my grandchild without him having to go through medical or any you know, of those testing um, in order to qualify. I could take out a policy for him, say if I wanted to do a $50,000 policy or whatever, I could just add that on and then that, would be the, that would be added and then the premiums are all come out at the same time because it's part of my policy. Okay, so as a beneficiary, if I take out this policy for 250, let's say it's on me and then I die because I'm you know over 60 now. <laughs> I can leave that money to the trust and that means my children and grandchildren and I can designate how that money goes. I can say, you know, so and so gets a hundred thousand when they turn thirty, or if they graduate college, or how that goes. Yes, and the great thing, another great thing is, Vanda, um, that's a great question. Yes, you, you, you are the person who designates how that that what that looks like um, upon your death and, and being payable to your loved ones. So the other amazing thing about it is that it's going to be in all likelihood, it's going to be um, growing in value because it's going to be uh, also an investment, if you will. So it will it can grow in value. It will never be, um, it will have funds attached to it that have accrued in interest. Hmm. So that is a way to, you know, start your generational wealth, per se, if you teach everybody how to do that. And then when they die, it goes into this fund for their yes. kids and grandkids. That is a way, a great way for people to have conversations about building generational wealth. And then we bypass the um, confusion, animosity, fighting, arguing among heirs about who's going to get what because it's all defined. So already, everything is already broken down into different categories for or, or by individual what that person's um, portion of any beneficiary proceeds would look like. And um, there's no there's no way for them to um, 
I can't think of a way I should say that, but I'm not an attorney. I couldn't think of a way possible for a person to um, circumvent what is laid out in the trust and get the trustee to, to break um, that document, the legality of the document, override the legality of that document and let them ambush the family and take funds that they're not entitled to. And so what happens once the people that establish the fund or the trust, like they're deceased, um, the family? So, yeah, yes, does? that's a great question. So the way that I understand it is that at the time that the we are the, at the time that the trust is being established, you could say, for example, have conversation about future heirs, unborn heirs, and what that's going to look like. Because maybe there's some proceeds that you want to save to reserve for those yet to be born individuals. And and then the longer that the money sits in the trust, it's got more opportunity to grow. Hmm. So if you're thinking about future generations, then um, it could be, it could look like you may have something that's not associated with that policy that you want to add into the trust. It could be real estate or something different. Maybe you hit the lottery and you want to put that into the trust. Um, I think that you could work those things in with, with the help of the right individual who has the legal knowledge and expertise to do that. Interesting. My, my mind is turning here. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of uh, scenarios I can think of, but we'll talk about that later. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> that's good information. Um, that's something that was not, you know, taught to me growing up. I don't know how long the trust thing has been out. You just hear about trust fund babies and people with right. trust funds and you think, oh, it's right. with a lot of money. But it could be the average person who has something that they want to leave yeah. to their family. Right. And, and I want to, I appreciate you for bringing that point up because there are a variety of different products that we have at Transamerica. So we do have term life policies. We have final expense policies. We have other whole life policies. And the important thing is that for, um, for your family, um, for you to give consideration to, for any individual to give consideration to what happens to their family if they lose um, a loved one, particularly the person who is in the position of breadwinner in the household, what happens to your family? So in some cases, the recommendation might not be to do a trust, um, do a policy where you get a trust, the recommendation might be to do um, a million dollar policy because a, a policy of $250,000 face value may not be significant enough to pay off, say for example, your family home if something happens to the breadwinner. So we always look at on a case by case scenario, what is gonna be in the best interest of those parties, but definitely um, thinking about um, asset transfer and wealth distribution and generational wealth. Those are things that we really you know, look at when we, when we start to talk about what's gonna be a, the better plan, the better fit for a family. It could be that the family has five or six children and we, we would put, a, get, put together a plan that if the breadwinner, God forbid, passed away, then would there be money available for those children to be able to go to college? Would, say, mom, if dad passed away, would mom um, have money to be able to continue on in the lifestyle that she's become accustomed to with her five children without having her breadwinner there? So we, we weigh all of those factors when we start to talk to people about the plan that's going to be the best plan for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but definitely um, in terms of what you what you mentioned, um, just being able to, to say, you know, we, we've had a very thought engaging conversation and we've looked at what the debts are um, for that family or for that individual. And what are the things that that would necessarily need to be covered if there were if that person were lost and um how, what kind of lifestyle would they want their family to have going forward? Mm, yep, that's true. Some of them say, I don't care, I'll be gone. And other ones like, ah. there, are, there are those people that say that. I'm They're gonna like, set if, you if up. If person moves on, I'm gonna come back and haunt them. We're like, well, now that's just creepy. But okay, you know, it's all it's all you. If that's what you want to do. But, you know, thinking about, you know, your home, your, your the homestead and, you know, 
college um, choices and things like that for your children. Maybe somebody wants to have money like you got daughters. Um, I have a daughter. Maybe I would say I want to have money set aside that if, if something happened to me and I wanted to make a contribution for Lauren for a wedding. And if she wasn't married by a certain age, then she can use it for a house or whatever, it, whatever that looks like for you. You can put any kind of, you know, beneficiary terms together, whether it's in a trust or not. Um, but definitely thinking about what's going to be the best thing for your family, the loved ones that are behind to, to, you know, to go forward after, you know, you're no longer here. Those are the conversations that we have with the clients. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. Well, thank you for your information. And I got your contact okay. information up here. Uh, 832-694-5090. If you want Correct. to get in touch with Miss Westmoreland and talk more in detail about your situation. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, Shima. Miss Vanda. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.